All right, back at it again with another Tingler. Delving into the world of the good doctor, Chuck Tingle. I alluded to this one in the last uh, Tingle book that I read, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt, that there appeared to be what looks like a direct sequel to Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt. So this time we're going to be reading Pounded in the Butt by My Book, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt. Now... Before I start reading, I <laughs> I have to say something about this cover. Because it's really good. Just look at the cover of this thing. Pounded in the butt by my book. Pounded in the butt by my own butt. So you can see here there's a man wearing a cross necklace. It's nice and everything. But you can see his book, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt. But the book has a face on it because that's the object that's going to be pounding him in the butt in this entry to the Tingleverse. I love it. It's one of my... Uh... Oh, shit, actually. If you look, um... <laughs> I think he either forgot to or intentionally forgot to completely Photoshop the rest of the body because you can actually kind of see the chest of the face here on the book pounded in the butt by my own butt like just underneath the head and the wing there there's there's a faint body that is <laughs> I'm, okay i'm gonna start reading now this episode is brought to you by boy scout badges Pounded in the Butt by my book, Pounded in the Butt by my own butt, by Chuck Tingle. Being a famous writer is an experience that few others can relate to, even for those who ascend to the realm of celebrity in another field. I'm sure there's an entire set of rules and baggage that comes along with being a well-respected actor, musician, or politician, but the difference lies in the fact that the fame of these figures relies almost entirely on them being recognized. Us authors, on the other hand, might as well not even exist. For some, this is a huge blessing, preferring a world of day-to-day -day anonymity where one can buy a coffee in the morning without being photographed, or go to the bookstore without being asked to sign something. Uh, also, I don't know if you can hear, but my nose is kind of half-plugged up, so I'm talking... I'm, not, I'm not talking through my nose without it. So, <laughs> if you notice that, that's that's why. On the other hand, a little recognition might be nice every once in a while. Sure, the residual checks are good from my massive book sales, but just once I would love to see that excited glimmer of recognition in someone's eye as they glimpse me on my morning stroll, and not just because we're neighbors. This is the life of a writer. I start my day with a little yoga in the morning, centering my mind and hoping for some ideas to begin the gestation process deep within my thoughts. Inspiration is a fickle beast, however, and sometimes there will be weeks upon weeks when nothing comes. Either way, the sun never hesitates as it ri rises over my home in Billings, Montana. I know where I'm moving next year. Time continues onward with or without my inspiration, and against it, I am helpless. Sometimes I'll walk to my local coffee shop to get the gears turning. Other days, I just sit in front of my computer screen, staring at the blank page before me, a tiny blinking cursor taunting me with every pixelated flash. I've also found that working out gets the brain going sometimes, so I've been hitting the gym quite a lot, toning my body as a way to tone my mind. I've got no problem admitting that for someone in a profession that's known for sitting alone in stagnation, I look pretty damn good these days. This is like a, this is like a Chuck Tingle diary entry. I feel like <laughs> he just took his, uh, his bedside journal and composed it, took what it, took what he wrote and threw it on the, <laughs> threw it in a Word document. <clears throat> this is my basic routine and not once do I get recognized as Buck Trungle. Highly, oh no, never mind. <laughs> Not once do I, got re do I get recognized as Buck Trungle, highly successful author of science fiction literature and the best-selling novel, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt. 
hailed as a transhumanist masterpiece, pounded in the butt by my own butt has done wonders for my career, yet my face goes almost entirely unknown to those around me. Sure, I get plenty of fan mail to a small P.O. box that I hold down at the Billings Post Office, but other than that, the repercussions of my hard work rarely show themselves in the real world. These days, visiting the post office and checking my email have become sources of constant distraction, my ego craving the brief nuggets of... Fuck. These days, visiting the post office and checking my email have become sources of constant distraction, my ego craving the brief nuggets of love and adoration from fans who will never truly know anything about me. It's no wonder that my writer's block has gotten so severe over the last few weeks. I'm sitting in the office of my mid-century Montana home, looking out the window and trying desperately to find that spark of inspiration. My thoughts are wandering, completely unaware that my life is about to change forever. The familiar synthesized ding of an email alert suddenly pulls me from my trance and fills me with a jolt of excitement. I turn my attention back to the computer and open my email, reading the subject of this mysterious new message aloud to myself. I just can't get right today. Lawsuit, I say, the single word making my brow furrow immediately. I open the message and continue to read, Dear Mr. Trungle, this is a formal notification of a civil suit being brought against you by myself for unpaid royalties while using my likeness as your basis of your book pounded in the butt by my own butt. As the sole writer of my own fiction, I'm utterly confused by the words in front of me. Immediately, I sense that this may be some kind of sick joke, but I continue to read aloud. I understand that you are the writer of said novel, but I happen to be the novel itself. As the one being bought and sold, I demand 100% of the royalties generated by sales of Pounded in the Butt by my own butt and all related merchandise. Hold the phone, full stop. I didn't know there was related merchandise for Pounded in the Butt by my own, for any Chuck Tingle stuff. I'm going to have to look into that later. If I could read one of these wearing a pounded in the butt or a Chuck Tingle t-shirt, that would make me very happy. Too bad uh, I don't have the money for that. Thank you, coronavirus. A cold chill runs down my spine as I finish the letter, realizing that my intuition was wrong and that this book means business. Immediately, I pick up the phone and call my lawyer, the line ringing one time before he picks up on the other end and greets me warmly. Buck, my lawyer calls out. What's happening over there? You good? Hi, Carl. I greet him, unsettled and out of sorts. I think we might have a problem. Carl's tone immediately shifts to one of undivided concern. What's going on? Is it Todd down the street again? No, no, not this time, I explain. I just got an email here from one of my books. He's demanding all the royalties from his sales. Have you ever heard of this? I hear Carl let out a long sigh on the other end of the line. <clears throat> Unfortunately, yes. My heart skips a beat. And? And this is very serious, Carl tells me. I would highly advise you to meet with your book in person, one-on-one, -on -one, and see if you can come to some kind of agreement on the matter. Oh, God. I groan. In person? You don't want to come? I mean, you're my lawyer. If things get heated, then I'll step in, of course, Carl explains calmly. But right now, my advice to you is to keep this as far away from the courtroom as possible. Right now, your book has a very, very good case against you. But I wrote him! I shout. That might very well be true, responds Carl, but he is the book. And as the book, he's entitled to all of his own rights. I'm sorry. Right now, you need to be thinking about damage control, and you need to make a deal with this book that both of you can live with. My brain is flooded with all kinds of thoughts and emotions, swirling together in a vicious cocktail of anxiety that renders me silent. Buck, Carl asks. Yeah, I'm here, I tell him. Sorry. I'm going to go email my book back and see if he can meet up tonight. Good idea, Carl says. Let me know if you need anything else. I hang up and open up a new email, racking my brain for exactly what to say to this litigious, sentient book. I arrive a bit early to the coffee shop where my book and me have arranged to meet, but the sentient tome is already right there waiting for me. When I walk in the door, I notice him immediately, a large, muscular copy of my most recent novel amid, amid a sea of normal human patrons. He stands out in the crowd, devilishly handsome, and carrying himself with an air of nonchalant swagger. I'm immediately intimidated, fuck, despite having written every word of him. <laughs> I 
I give my book a wave and a nod and then walk over to shake his paper hand. Hi there, I tell the novel. It's uh, nice to meet you. I'm Buck. Slater, the book says with manly confidence, but you might know me as founded in the butt by my own butt. I nod. I do, and I just wanted to say, the book holds up a finger to silence me. Let's not get into all of this yet. Why don't we grab a coffee first? He's right. I still haven't ordered anything. I excuse myself and get in line at the front counter, but I'm unable to keep from glancing back at the incredibly handsome volume. I'd seen this familiar cover more times than I could count. Hell, I was even part of designing it. But meeting Slater in person was an experience entirely different. What was once nothing more than a tiny creative spark lurking somewhere deep inside me is now a full-fledged presence of masculinity. A being that even I, as a straight man, couldn't help but be sexually attracted to. A powerful surge of lustful, erotic thoughts are trying desperately to work their way from my brain. And despite my best efforts, I can't keep them from letting in. Fuck, I... I can't keep from letting them in. I want my book, and it's not long before I accept my overwhelming feelings of lust. <laughs> That's it. I was straight, but six seconds of meeting this guy, and uh, we're going to turn that right around. I was supposed to whistle there, but it didn't work. <laughs> However, this meeting is about a business transaction and nothing more. Millions of dollars are on the line. <laughs> Doubt. And I'm not about to let some silly detour into the realm of gay attraction stop me from being a professional. I order for my drink and then bring it over to the table where Slater's waiting patiently for me. Sorry about that, I offer. Long line. My book smiles. No worries. So I just want to say right off the bat that it's truly amazing to meet you, I tell Slater, trying not to gush. It's just so strange to, to meet a book that I wrote. It's kind of a dream come true for an author. Slater's expression doesn't change, not as upset at all, but clearly trying to keep some kind of simmering emotion under wraps. You see, that's the problem, right there, my novel, novel says bluntly. I freeze, not intending to hit on such a sore subject right off the bat, but clearly doing so. What's the problem? My book is clearly frustrated. Imagine what it's like to work your ass off every single day in the hope of becoming a bestseller. Blood, sweat, and tears are shed to pursue your dreams as you wait on the shelves of bookstores and libraries, just praying that some new reader is going to come along and pick you up, Slater says, his voice trembling. And then finally, when you make it and you get on that bestseller list, you've got nothing to show for it. Every time I'm sold, do you know how much money I make? I nod solemnly. Nothing, the book says, clearly frustrated. And do you know who gets all the credit for my hard work? I nod again. You do, Slater snaps. Your fucking name is written across my face, for God's sakes. The book says this a little too loudly, and suddenly the entire coffee shop is looking at us, frozen in a moment of voyeuristic awe. Sorry, is all I can meekly offer to the other patients, patrons, who eventually turn back to whatever they're doing. I'm sorry, too, by the way. I am butchering this masterpiece of literature. Every other sentence, I can't seem to get it right, so... Apologies. My book takes a deep breath trying to calm himself. It's been difficult. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to come into your life and harass you or fuck everything up. I just want some kind of recognition from my effort. I have to admit, I'm moved by the book's story. As a writer, never before had I considered what it must be like to be on the other side of the business, a book without any say in the way you're bought and sold. Even then, I can't imagine what it's like to have nothing to show for it. You're right, I tell him. Slater's eyes immediately light up as I say this, his expression changing slightly. I'm right. I'm sorry that you feel this way, I elaborate. When I wrote Pounded in the Butt by my own butt, I had no idea that this would happen to you. I've never considered what it must be like for you as a book, and I want to make things right. Slater closes his eyes tight, a single tear rolling down the image of a muscular flying butt that graces his cover. I reach out and place my hand against him. Immediately sensing a deep connection between us. What do you need? I ask. Half of the royalties? 
All of them? Slater's silent for a moment, and I can sense something shift deep within him. He looks me... <laughs> He looks me up and down, hesitating before finally offering. Can we take a walk? Sure, I agree. The two of us stand up and head out into the evening Montana air, fresh and clean as it swirls around us and ruffles through Slater's off-white pages. The two of us head away from the main drag and into a stretch of road lined. He kind of spelled that. It says roar supposed to be road, lined with thick green trees on either side, a perfect display of the best that Billings can offer in natural beauty. It's very hard being a book, Slater tells me, for all the reasons I mentioned before, and then some. I bet it is, especially with ebooks on the rise, I offer. You have no idea, Slater says, shaking his head, but there are other things, personal things. The second that he says that, my heart skips a beat. A vibe is starting to build between us, an unspoken attraction that seems to finally be bubbling to the surface. <laughs> so much for keeping things professional. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I ask, my voice trembling as we walk. Well, Slater begins, clearly wanting to explain himself, but holding back out of some kind of gnawing fear. I'll tell you one thing, it's not easy finding a date for me. I stopped walking immediately and turned to my book. Seriously? You're like, perfect. You've got to be kidding me. Slater shakes his head and laughs to himself, partially at my lack of understanding and partially out of modest embarrassment. <laughs> you have to say that. You wrote me. Pounded in the butt by my own butt says. I'm not just saying that, I assure him. You're the most handsome talking book I've ever seen. Honestly. Slater flashes me a look. Mm -hmm. An intense fire starting to blossom behind his eyes. He can't help but show his attraction for me now, and the feeling is mutual. However, something else lurks deep within his gaze, a stirring anger just waiting to rear its vicious head. <sighs> Discrimination against sentient books is still a real thing, and I deal with it every day, my novel tells me. Add to that the fact that I'm gay, and you'll find that it's damn near impossible for me to get laid. I shake my head, almost unable to believe what I'm hearing. When a living book, as gorgeous and ripped as Slater, can't find a guy to hook up with, you know the dating scene is in trouble. I'm sorry, I tell my lava. I wish there was something I could do. Slater cracks a knowing smile. What if there was? Again, I feel the tension building between us. Like? Like... My book trails off. Maybe we could work out a way for you to keep half of your royalties, and all you'd have to do is let me fuck you silly. Immediately, I'm in total shock. The entire time I'd known that an offer like this from my living book was a real possibility, but now that it's presented itself in the real world, I'm taken off guard a bit. My head is swimming in a flood of romance and emotion, and finally I force my lips to form a single word. Yes. Back at the house, my book and I immediately head upstairs to the writing room and can barely get through the door before we're all over each other. Slater's kissing, kissing me passionately as my hands roam across his sturdy mat cover. His body is incredible, absolutely ripped and muscular from head to toe, and when he wraps himself around me, I feel safe and whole in a way that I haven't felt for years, at least since the passing of my late wife, Borbo. I... <laughs> I can't help it. I begin to cry right then and there. My body, overwhelmed by the presence of such a powerful, real love between man and book. I never knew there was someone like you out there in the world, I tell, pounded in the butt by my own butt. There wasn't until you made me, the book says. His words send a blissful chill down my spine and suddenly I just can't wait any longer. I drop to my knees and pull off Slater's book jacket, revealing his perfectly nude physique and a, and a rapidly hardening cock that's as thick as they come. I look up at Slater with lustful eyes and then graciously swallow my book's member. <laughs> bobbing up and down across the length of his shaft while I cradle his balls playfully. 
Slater lets out a long moan and backs up against my writing desk, reeling from the incredible sensation as I service him. This is my first and only gay experience, but I immediately feel as though I've got the hang of things. After a few more pumps, I decide to show off my confidence by taking Slater's dick all the way down into my throat. I push into him as far as he can go and then suddenly stop as my book's rod reaches the edge of my gag reflex. I try to relax, but the novel's swollen cock simply won't go any farther, and on my final attempt, I'm forced to to pull back and come up spitting, sputtering, and gasping for air. (laughs) Too much for you? My book asks. I shake my head, a dangling rope of spit connecting my lips to the head of his shaft. I need it, I tell him. I need your huge book dick. Without hesitation, I open wide and take Slater's rod once more, this time making sure to relax the muscles in my neck enough to consume him entirely. (laughs) The book's hard cock plunges deeper and then deeper still until it comes to a halt. With his balls pressed up against my chin and his chiseled abs in my face. Slater's cock is completely consumed within me and I hold him here for as long as I can, letting the sentient, sorry, collection of printed word fully enjoy the way that I service him. Eventually, though, I run out of air and I am forced to pull back with a gasp. The rough treatment from my book is more than a little arousing, flooding my senses with a singular ache for cock unlike anything I've ever experienced. Slater is a commanding presence who knows what he wants and knows exactly how to get it from me. I need you inside of me, I sputter, caught up in the moment. I need you to fuck my ass. Before he can respond, I stand up and take Slater's place next to the writing desk, only this time I'm facing away as I bend over the edge at my hip. I pop my muscular ass out as I look back over my shoulder at my huge sentient book, his abs rippling as he climbs into position behind me. Pound me like the little bad author I am, I demand. Punish me with that dick. With pleasure. My novel responds, aligning the head of his cock with the puckered rim of my tight asshole. I can feel him testing the tension of my sphincter, teasing my edges with his massive rod while I attempt to relax enough to take him painlessly. I reach back with one hand and spread my cheeks wide. Fuck. (laughs) I'm going to try to fix that really quick. I'll probably cut that out. Or I might not, if I'm too lazy. Just do it, I command. Stuff me full of literary cock right now. Pounded in the butt by my own butt takes my words to heart and finally thrusts forward. It does say trusts. I didn't mess that one up by myself. I just read what it said. Um, Thrusts forward in one powerful, smooth movement, impaling me across the length of his gigantic rod. Oh, fuck, I moan. Bracing myself against the desk as Slater continues to pump in and out of me, my body can barely handle his size stretched to the limit as his cock invades my sensitive hole. My book quickly gains speed, pummeling me harder and harder until eventually he's hammering away at my asshole with everything he's got. The desk shakes with every thrust, rattling loudly while Slater and I moan in a chorus of unhinged pleasure. Never before have I taken anything up the ass, let alone a mammoth cock, but the experience is already more than I could ever have hoped. My body trembles at the strange mixture of discomfort and pleasure and ache from deep within that builds and builds with every rail against my ass and slowly begins to consume every nerve in my body. I soon realize that what I'm experiencing is the beginning stages of a rarely seen prostate orgasm. As Slater continues to slam me, (laughs) I look back at him over my shoulder, my body quaking. When I wrote you, I had no idea that one day you'd be fucking me up the ass, I tell him. But goddamn, I'm so glad I did it. Do you really mean it, my book asks, tears of joy welling up in his eyes as emotion overtakes us both. Are you glad you wrote me? Of course I mean it, I tell him. I know that this is just a business transaction, but I want you to know. It means more to me. You mean more than just a 50% royalty share. My words seem to touch Schlater deeply because almost immediately he slows to a stop, gazing into my eyes. The book pulls out of me and lifts me back up, then turns me around to face him. Do you really mean that? Slater asks. 
Of course, I tell him. Every word. My book pulls me close. I love you, Buck. I love you too, I tell him, our lips locking in yet another passionate kiss. Eventually, our embrace begins to tumble backwards against the desk yet again, and soon enough I find myself lying on its hard surface, my back flat and my muscular legs held open as my cock shoots straight out at full attention. Slater positions himself at the rim of my ass yet again, but now he wastes no time pushing forward and getting to work on my reamed hole. The sensation is incredible as I reach down between my legs and start to... I can't hold it. Every time I read, beat myself off. <laughs> I, I love that fucking line. The sensation is incredible as I read my, reach down between my legs and start to beat myself off to the rhythm of every anal slam. Almost immediately, the sensation of impending orgasm is back, simmering within my loins, building into a steady, pulsing wave. I can't believe I'm being pounded in the butt by pounded in the butt by my own butt, I gasp, my eyes rolling back into my head. My book! My favorite book! Believe it, the novel says with a smile. Suddenly I'm hit with a powerful orgasm that rips through my body in a series of fierce tremors. I seize forward, my teeth clench tight while my body frantically grapples with how to deal with all of this stimulation. Oh my god, I cry out, the sensation f building until it finally ejects hard from my body in the form of several hot ropes of purely spunk. When I finally finish, my book pulls out of me and I drop down onto the floor before him, kneeling in tribute before my alpha book lover. I reach up and take his rock-hard cock in my hand, stroking furiously while he trembles and shakes above me. I need your cum all over my fucking face, I tell my living book. Unload that self-published jizz right onto me. Slater's immediately rocking back against my grip, his hips moving in tandem with the rhythm of my hand until he just can't take it anymore and explodes against my face with a load of hot white spunk. It rains down onto me a physical expression of the visceral emotional connection between author and best-selling novel. I catch as much of the jizz as I can on my tongue while the rest of his semen runs down my cheeks on either side in long white streaks. When my book finally finishes, he collapses into my writing chair, completely exhausting. Now that is imagery. That was amazing, I tell him, standing up as his spunk continues to dangle from my chin. You're the best lover I've ever had. The, my book smiles at me. The feeling's mutual. Would you like to join me in the shower, I ask. Pounded in the butt by my own butt shakes his head. I'm made of paper. That's not a good idea. I nod. I'll be right back then. As the warm water runs over me, I can't help but think about how much has changed in such a short amount of time. Just hours before, I was a lonely man slaving away over my keyboard for another hit book, and now I'm deeply and profoundly in love with my handsome bestseller. I turn off the water and step out, toweling off before heading back into the writing room where my book is waiting. Before you say anything, Slater says, I want you to know that I'm dropping the lawsuit. I stop immediately in my tracks. What? I'm dropping the lawsuit completely, remarks the novel, who still sits in my writing chair. You wrote me, and I think you deserve all the credit for that. I shake my head as I approach him. No, 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 you can't. You deserve the credit just as much as I do. I may have written you, but you're the one out here every day hustling for the sales. You're the one who has to be flipped through time and time again. You've opened my eyes to the devastating unfairness that books encounter every day, and I want to be a part of changing that. Pounded in the butt by my own butt seems genuinely moved. He stands up from the chair and embraces me in a warm hug. Thank you, the book says. Let's just split everything, I tell him, right down the middle. My book nods. We stand like this for a while longer until finally Slater pulls away. I have to be going now, he tells me. I'm about to be sold to a young woman at the bookstore downtown. But, I say, unsure of where to go with this, just knowing that I don't want him to leave. But I love you. We'll see each other again, my book says. But for now, I have to go. And then, just like that, the love of my life is gone. 
I stand alone in my writer's room for a long time, trying desperately to hold back my tears. Once again, just when I think I've found real love, it's ripped away from me, like my frozen wife at the bottom of a cold lake. Holy shit. Eventually, I have a seat and reopen my laptop, a fresh new email notification immediately popping up across my screen. I open the tab and read the subject aloud. Lawsuit, <laughs> it says. A smile slowly crosses my face as I realize who it's from. My best-selling novel, Space Raptor Butt Invasion. That's it. That concludes Pounded in my Pounded in the Butt by my book, Pounded in the Butt by my own butt. That was actually getting hard to uh, read there at the end there. Um, yeah. That was pretty, pretty uh, steamy, I guess. It wasn't like a sequel. I mean, I kind of, I didn't expect it to be an actual sequel to Pound It in the Butt by My Own Butt, like with the same characters and everything, but it was pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm giving that a solid 7 out of 10. I think next I'm going to read... I, I only have a, a limited number of these on PDF. I had a buddy that owns them and he gave them to me. Um, sent, or just sent me the PDF of them. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 12 total Tanglers, so that's 3 down. Um, or is that 4 down? Yeah, that's 4 down. So we're a third of the way through my personal Chuck Tingle collection before I have to start actually buying these things. And uh, at that point, I should because this guy is... He deserves all of our uh, all of our support and money because he's still writing things like T Rex Anal Workout and Game of Butts: The Pounds of Winter. This motherfucker got Winds of Winter out before George Martin did. That's that is uh, admirable. Um, taken by the gay unicorn biker. Fake news, real, <laughs> fake news, real boners. I, pokey butt go, pounded by them all. Butt night, buttle royale. <laughs> um, oh my, holy shit, hold on, I'm just finding this out for the first time. Um, this motherfucker has written... I don't own this one, and I don't want to spend three dollars to buy it. There's already an audiobook version though for three ninety five. There is pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my own. Wait, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my own butt. I feel like there's one too many books in there. But, um, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my own butt. Wait, is there like a third one? Hold on. Now I'm, now I'm actually curious. The book's over, by the way. You can just end the video now, but, um, I'm going to figure this out really quick. So there's pounded in the butt by my own butt. There's pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my own butt. <sighs> and then there's... Pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my own butt. So yeah, okay. Uh, there's like... There's like two more of these where he's just one step above in the Tingleverse, like the multi, uh, the layers of the Tingleverse that are stacked right on top of each other. There's two more layers above us right now uh, where he gets pounded in the butt by his book, pounded in the butt by his, by his own butt or whatever. So, um, yeah. <laughs> hey, that one's different. I kind of want to read Shared by the Chocolate Milk Cowboys. <laughs> There's no, like, pounded or... It's just a... It's different. 
the state of California stalks my butthole. I'm I'm just getting lost in the in the tingle verse right now. Living corn, James Corny fired in the butt. <laughs> I'm in love with the handsome mummy race car in my butt. Jesus Christ. Okay, um, that's all for now. Uh, join me again next time for another uh, journey into the world of Chuck Tingle, Dr. Chuck Tingle. Um, yeah. <laughs>